mentions about the tawaf. He says you must make tawaf. What is tawaf? In circulating the Kaaba. This is the action known as tawaf. And because this tawaf can only be made in Mecca, al Mukarramah in the Haram Sharif, the Imam is encouraging us to make as much as tawaf as possible. Because you can pray salah in the Haram, of course the reward is multiplied greatly. And you can also pray the salah here. You can do nawafil there, you can do nawafil here, but there's no comparison in terms of the reward, I know. But the tawaf is such an action that you cannot perform anywhere else. So you want to take advantage of this. <coughs> and the Imam says you must make tawaf of the ancient house of the Kaaba al Sharifa in abundance. Why? For the one making tawaf is immense in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever is making tawaf, even if you're just walking in the, the precincts of the Kaaba, in that blessed Sahih Sharif, uh, as they say, the Mataf, the area where the Kaaba is located, a Sharifa, you're being immersed in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you don't, might not know or not, the mercy is continuously descending. And there are special mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that descend in those sacred areas that do not descend in other places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made makhsus, has allocated special mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are descending in that blessed place that you will not be able to obtain anywhere else. And the Imam says why you are doing so because the Imam was subhanallah not only an Imam, an alim of the outward sciences, he was an alim of the inward sciences of the heart. So he says while you are doing tawaf, your heart should be overflowing with the veneration and magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? Because the Imam doesn't just want you to encirculate and do an action and just not understand what you're doing. Right? Every action, every ibadah in Islam has an outward, has a lahir, and has an inward, has a batil. You know, this is why, for example, about salah, what do they say? As salatu mi'rajul mu'mineen. In physicality, you're not going on mi'raj. In physicality, in the outward, you're performing a salah. You're performing these actions which have been prescribed in the Quran and especially in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sallu kama ra'aytumuni, usalli." That perform the prayer as you see me performing the prayer. This is the outward reality of the prayer. Now, what is the inward reality of the prayer is that we have to spiritually be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is like a mi'raj, an ascension. Not a physical ascension but a spiritual ascension for the believer. Right? Likewise every ibadah, tawaf as well, has a lahir, has an, uh, an, an outward reality which is encirculating the Kaaba in a certain direction starting at the Hajar al-Aswad and making seven rounds following the Blessed Sunnah and teaching of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu and it has an inward reality, the, the, the Batil, which is to venerate who? The Lord of the Kaaba, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So while you are in Tawaf, the Imam is saying, your heart should be overflowing with the veneration, the Ta'adheem, and the glorification, and Tasbih, and Takbir of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make Tawaf, one of the most authentic Recitation that he would recite is the third kalima. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa Allah wa Allahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. He would recite this in abundance and tawah because it's all veneration of Allah. Because his heart is overflowing with the ta'adim of Allah. And who knows Allah more than Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why when we do tawah we should perform the sunnah and recite with the, the presence of heart, knowing the glorification of Allah and the veneration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the third kalima. The Imam says, do not busy yourselves with anything other than the recitation of the Qur'an, remembrance of Allah and supplication, beware of idle speech. Nowadays we see in the tawaf, people far be it, sometimes, not everybody, I'm just saying generally speaking, there is no concentration in the tawaf. Sometimes their cell phone is with them. And they're answering the calls during the tawaf. Ajeeb. Right? This is against the, the, the spiritual etiquette. And this is against the manners and the adab of the tawaf. 
Right? You're supposed to be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your tongue and your heart should be busy with dhikr Allah, dhikr Rasul, recitation of the Qur'an, making dua. This is your chance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you. But some people, they are speaking with their friends, they are speaking with their companions, Astaghfirullah, some are making jokes, some are answering phone calls. I've even seen some people, they, they take the cell phone, it's, it seems funny, but it's a little bit sad as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all hidayah. Amen. That they, they say, they call their hometown and they say, Mom or Dad, I'm here on Hajj and Tawaf. And they put the cell phone on the Kaaba and they say, Make Tawaf. Huh? They, they put the cell phone on the, on the Kaaba and they say, Make Tawaf. Right? I mean, you can make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if you're home. You, if you have presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah hears your dua. Okay. Don't worry. One of the, the awliya Allah, they were asked, what is the ism al -adam? You know, there is an ism al -adam. They say there is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something and use that name and call upon Allah with that ism al -adam, then Allah accepts your dua. So, they asked one of the awliya Allah, his name was a Sayyid, an Imam al Aydarus, radiallahu anhu from Yemen, and they said, Ya Imam, what is the ism Allah al -Adam? And the Imam, he said, some people have said ism Allah al -Adam is the, uh, uh, the tasbih, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Some people have said ism Allah al -Adam is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There have been different riwayat. Some people say, Yad al-Jalal wa al-Ikram. But the Imam said, the real ism Allah al-Azam is not a specific name of Allah. He said, anytime you make a dua with your heart, Allah will accept. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What does that mean? That the, the, the key to acceptance is when you're present with Allah. And your heart is knowing who you're asking and what you're asking for. Subhanallah. That is ism Allah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows sincerely you're making the dua from the heart, Allah will accept the dua inshaAllah. Then the Imam says, be consistent in reading the adhkar and the duas which should be read during the tawaf and the sa'i and in other places on the blessed hajj. You should also have the utmost concern for visiting all the sacred places. Hmm? So there's some things that we can speak about this. There are certain adhkar from the Prophet ﷺ that you should make, as I mentioned, the third kalima when performing the tawaf. For example, between the ruknay yamani and the hajr al-aswad. So on one wall of the Kaaba, when you reach the ruknay yamani, and when you're going towards the hajr al-aswad, the Prophet ﷺ would recite, رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابُ النَّارَ So when you're in that area, you should recite this dua as much as possible. Is following the blessed teaching of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for example, when you're on Sa'i, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite certain ayat. For example, when he would begin the Sa'i and he would face the blessed Kaaba Sharifa with his noble face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he would recite the verse, Inna Safa wa Marwata min Sha'ailullah until the end of that verse. That indeed, the Safa and Marwa are from the signs of Allah until the end of that ayah. And then while you're making Sa'i, there is not a specific dua, you can make any dua that comes to your heart, any dua from the Qur'an, the Sunnah, any dua which is coming to you. Alhamdulillah, in the Hajj, people, they get scared, they think this is very hard, difficult, you have to memorize this dua. This, actually, it's not that difficult. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for the believers. There are certain duas that are at certain places you have to do. But once you get into the, once you perform the Hajj or Umrah once, Alhamdulillah, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy and you want to go again and again. Alhamdulillah. And many of the time, or throughout many of the, of the performances of the different rites of the Hajj, it's actually up to you, whichever dua that comes to your heart, you should make. Some people, they are carrying books with them, you can do that as well, no problem. But some people say if you carry too many books and you're too much worried, then you forget the purpose of the Hajj sometimes. So it's up to you. You can carry the books and look and recite, or if you find that the books are distracting you from the, you know, remembering Allah or the presence, then you, whatever comes to your heart, you can make alhamdulillah. And the Imam said at the end of that sentence that visit all the sacred places. Visit the sacred places. Why? Because these, when you visit the sacred places, as I said, there's a special barakah and mercy that is descending upon those places. 
Unfortunately, we have to speak about this because certain people who have authority in the Haramain Sharifain, every year you see they are trying to destroy a few places of sacredness. Not everybody, but there are certain people within who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the authority in these places that they want to eradicate certain places. For example, the place where the Prophet ﷺ was born. It is not far from the Haram. It's within actually the hudud of the Haram. If some people have been, it's now a library. library. It's turned into a library. But what it, it would have been such an honor if they kept it as a place where the Prophet ﷺ was born. The people can visit there and they can remember the birth of the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they will remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the universe that He set a mercy for all the world sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that mercy was born in this place in Makkah al-Mukarramah. And imagine how much blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending upon that place. On Isra wal Mi'raj, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken, on Isra wal Mi'raj, he passed by a place called Baytul Laham. In English, we call this place Bethlehem. And this is the place where Sayyidina Nabiullah Isa ibn Maryam السلام, was born. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam said, Ya Rasulullah, please descend here and perform. The Raka'atayn and the Prophet وسلم, performed two nawafil, nawafil at the place where the Prophet Isa alayhi salam was born. Now I'm telling you why, because there is barakah there. The Prophet Sallallahu is not in need of that barakah. We are in need of the barakah. The Prophet Sallallahu is the utmost form of barakah. There is no one more mubarak in the creation than Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the asal of the barakah. So why is he performing his nawafil in a place where Prophet Isa Alaihi Salaam who is not at the rank of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he's still a great Prophet He's showing us ta'lim al-ummah. To show the ummah that those places where the Prophets are attached to, those places where the Prophets are born, those places where even the Prophet sallallahu has walked through with their blessed qudum al-sharif, or where they have touched, or where they have made dua, or where they have supplicated, or where they have done sujood, those places have barakah. And the Prophet ﷺ is teaching the Ummah to come and look at the vision of the Prophet ﷺ and the Isra wal Mi'raj, the hikmah, that the Prophet ﷺ is showing us that I am performing nawafil at the place where a Prophet is born. Imagine if we perform nawafil at the place where Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. How much we would receive barakah. But unfortunately, people who don't have enough knowledge and they think that this is shirk or it's a form of joining partners with Allah or it's a form of bid'ah. They say, no, why should we keep this place? Let's remove it, make it into a library. Don't give people access to these places because they perform, uh, they might do shirk or do this or that. Educate the people. If you see people are doing something wrong, educate them. But if you see from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you are allowed to perform salah in the places which have barakah, which are connected to the Rusul and the Anbiya wa Musaleen alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Hmm? So, visiting those places, not only the Haramain al-Sharifain, but those places which are connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those places which are connected to the Ahlul Bayt, those places which are connected to the Azwaj al-Tahira, those places which are connected to the Sahaba, radiyallahu alayhi wa sallam, those places which are connected to the Awliya Allah. These places have a special mercy. Try to visit as much as possible. Right? Visiting the blessed uh, cemetery Jannatul Ma'la in, in, in Makkah al Mukarramah, who is resting there? Our mother, Sayyidah Umm al Mu'minin, Sayyidatina Khadija al Kubra, radiallahu anha. Right? Also resting there is uh, many Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, many Shuyukh and Awliya al Mukarrabin. Visit that place, make dua, make Fatiha, make Isa al Tharab. It's, a, it's an action that will give you acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise in Madina to Munawwara, Jannah to Al-Baqi. Allahu Akbar. Visiting the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his blessed wives, as wives of Tahirat, the Sahaba, and the, the blessed children of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his blessed daughters, his blessed sons who were, who were passed from this dunya at a young age, 
عليه الصلاة والسلام and many of the aimah of Medina and Munawwara and the awliya Allah you go there and it's, an, it's an, a place of acceptance so the imam is telling us and refreshing our aqeedah that we should visit the places of barakah and we should visit the places which are sacred why? because you're not only are you going to get the spiritual blessing but your iman will be renewed your iman will be renewed when you visit these places you put yourself in that time Allah, you put yourself in that time. You know, why do people say when they go to Medina to Munawwara and they talk about the, the, the streets of Medina? Why? Why? Why are the streets of Medina? Stone, sand. But what's in what's in the because the beloved sallallahu walked in these streets. The beloved sallallahu Imam Malik radiallahu anhu, the Imam al Medina, Imam al Madhab. He used to say, he never wore sandals in Medina, he never wore any shoes in Medina. Allah. Allah. And he was asked, why do you do this? He said, I don't know if my shoe might touch any place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked. I don't want to put my sandals on a place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked. Because the Prophet sallallahu would walk in Medina to Munawwara. You don't know what place he touched sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which place his blessed foot Budun has touched, so how can we put our dirty sandals or, or shoes on a place where the Prophet blessed Adam al-Sharif was being placed? So this is the adab of the imma, this is the way of the Salaf al-Saliheen. Whatever you might hear nowadays about we are Salafi or we are this, the way of the Salaf al-Saliheen is clear. And the way of the Salaf al-Saliheen is love for Allah and love and veneration for the Blessed Prophet and his Ahlul Bayt and his Sahaba and the Awliya Allah and it is not based on hatred or calling people kafir or calling people mushrik or calling people bid'ah this is not or, or muqtadi' this is not the way of the Salaf al-Saliheen the way of the Salaf al-Saliheen is the way of Rahmah the way of the Salaf al-Saliheen is following Rahmatul Al-Alameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala accept our Adhanu Al-Alameen May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala allow us to benefit from these counsels and these advices of, of great Imam Al-Haddad May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala accept the journey for those of us who are going on the Hajj and Ziyarah of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala make Al-Hajj Al-Mabrur May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala make it easy for them May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala give them Ziyarah Al-Maqbula And may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala Fulfill all their noble intentions for this blessed journey. Ameen. Ya Rahman Ar Rahim, for those of us who are sick or suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the tribulations from the Ummah, Ya Rahman Ar May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa and afiyah to all those who are ill, all those who are sick in any form, all the marid and marid, Ya Rahman Ar Rahim. Ya Rahman Ar May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise the darajat of all those who have passed away from the Ummah, Muhammadiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them uh, in, uh, a place in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in Jannah for those that are ala ya rabbil alameen bi rahmatika ya arham ar rahimin wa ya akram al akramin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah